do, 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 six, bam. Yeah, I took that from the show. Oh God, it's everywhere. Oh my God, hey, welcome back to my stage YouTube channel. If you are seeing my face for the first time, hello, my name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theater. And this is my stage YouTube channel where I review shows that I see here in the UK as an independent theatre critic and I talk about news and gossip and drama and current events happening in the theatre industry worldwide in the West End and on Broadway. If that sounds like the kind of content that you'd be interested in seeing more of here on YouTube, make sure you've subscribed to my stage YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about all things six. That was a key. That was a key for me to choose. So the London production of Six that is currently playing at the Vaudeville Theatre, here is the programme, recently had a cast change. Now some previous members of the cast stayed on and some new cast members have joined them. And I saw the show a few weeks ago to catch some cast members I hadn't seen before, before they left. And so I was very excited to come back and see the new members of the cast. So that's what I'm gonna be talking about today. I want to tell you about the new cast members in this show. Now I'm often asked, what is the show I've seen the most times? And Six is far and away the answer to that question. There are not many shows I return to and there's not many shows I've seen even three times. Six, I would have to sit down and really think about it, but I think I'm approaching 20 visits to Six, which started with me seeing it for the first time at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival when it was inside an inflatable cow. I've seen it a bunch of times on tour. I've seen it at the Arts Theatre, the Lyric. I've seen it live at Hampton Court Palace, and I've now seen it a handful of times at the Vaudeville Theatre as well. As well as having a very special place in my heart because I've been following its journey and its ascendancy as it begins to take over the world, Six is also a really easy show for me to go back and see multiple times because of their approach to casting. Not only do they platform so many great talents who go on to so many amazing things, but also the way that the show is directed and the way that each performer is allowed to bring so much of their individuality and their own talent and their own personality to these roles makes it different every time you see the show. I can go and see it days apart and it will be a completely different vibe because of the configuration of queens that you have. When the show was first in the West End at the Arts Theatre, I kept going back in that first year just to try and see Grace and Vicky and Courtney Stapleton play all of these different roles. And I was so fascinated by how they could adapt to each different queen. Grace particularly, I saw her play five out of six of the original queens and I was just in awe of how fantastic she was in each of the roles and how different she was as well. Now, one of the enduring messages of the show Six, if you haven't seen it, is about how we oughtn't compare these historical women to each other and that you shouldn't do the same thing with the performers. So I'm not here to tell you that like, this is my favorite Berlin or this person isn't as good as this person. I want to tell you what I thought of these new performances, things that I noticed, things that I enjoyed about their performances, what makes them different, what makes them unique and things to look out for. So let's start with Catherine of Aragon. Now this video is gonna get off to a slightly dubious start because I did not see the full new cast lineup. I saw one alternate cast member and that was my Catherine of Aragon. I saw Monique Ash Palmer. It was actually her debut as Catherine of Aragon at this performance and she did a fantastic job. The usual principal performer in the role is Rianne Louise Mikulski. I will be going back to try and see her in the role because I know that she is a previous Tina Turner and I am so intrigued to see her bring some of that Tina Turner energy to Catherine of Aragon, because I think there's a lot of crossover between those two personalities. But Monique was fantastic. She played a discernibly younger Catherine of Aragon. I think a lot of the recent performances I've seen play the role a little bit more maternal, dare I say it, a little bit matronly. You know, she's the mother figure. She's the elder of the group. And Monique very much wasn't that. She was very much played it younger and sassy and feisty. And I loved that about her. Another thing I love about Six is how the cast members get to use their own accents in these roles. And Monique is, I think, from Leeds? Somewhere with a Northern accent in any case. And I loved all of the little Northern accent moments. Because Catherine of Aragon is so Beyonce-esque, it can get a little bit that. But just those moments where a Northern accent came through, 
I just, for some reason in this role, I think just makes her so much more accessible and so much more enjoyable and down to earth. I thought the same thing about Lauren Drew when she got to be a Welsh Catherine of Aragon. I like that it makes the character feel more real because of all of the queens on stage, I think she has the most sort of historical and regal sensibility compared with how the rest of their personalities have been modernized. Because she does take herself a little bit more seriously than the others when she has all of those lines about religious reforms and the dissolution of the monasteries, etc. Now let's talk about the song. I really enjoyed her vocal performance of No Way. As I was watching her and knowing it was her debut, I was thinking, gosh, this must be a stressful role to take on. And you would not have known that this was not something that she had done before. I was really proud watching her give this performance and you could tell that there was a lot of pride for her on stage. People were beaming alongside her when she finished No Way. She did a really great job. The one section of No Way where they're allowed to bring a little bit more individuality into it is when they're doing the na 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 or whatever their version of that is. She does more of a like a no 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 but she did put in a I'm not going at one point which is an ad lib I have never heard before. It's a nod to and I'm telling you I'm not going from Dreamgirls, which I kind of always thought No Way was a bit of a nod to anyway, when she does the there's no way. I'd always assumed that that was a deliberate Effie reference, but certainly Monique is nodding to it and I love that about her. And I think as she continues in the show, she's only gonna get more relaxed. I would love to see her relax a little bit with the choreography because the rest of them who have done it more times were more just like, yeah, this is when we do this. And it seems very relaxed and just like what they're doing. And Monique is still like executing it. And she nailed all of the choreography. I just want to see her be able to relax into it a little bit more, but that will come with more performances. Congrats to her on a brilliant debut. Next up was Bailey Carson. Now, Bailey is an Australian performer, and Bailey is among the first non binary performers to be cast in Six. Not the only performer so far, nor are they the first, but what's really significant about Bailey's casting in this role is there are fewer performers who were openly non binary at the time of being cast. And what that says is that the creative team can see that, they can acknowledge that and the door can still be open to these performers. I think there's a big difference between someone being cast while being openly and vocally non-binary and someone having a gender discovery through the process of being with the show. Not that one is any more valid than the other, but I think the fact that a non-binary performer has been deliberately cast in the show, I think that's so meaningful. And yet one more way that the creatives and the casting team at Six are showing inclusion to all people to be in this show. I think it's fantastic. Now, the two things I knew about Bailey prior to seeing them in this role was that they were an Australian performer. I believe they're an alumni of the Australian production of Jagged Little Pill and that they had a fantastic voice. And I can tell you both of those things are very, very true. While we're talking about accents, I love hearing Anne Boleyn with an Australian accent. It's just, for some reason, the Australian accent just makes me laugh at the best of times. You know I love doing a terrible one on these videos but I loved it so much. Don't lose your head. It's just so much fun to me. That just fed my soul. Bailey's whole energy throughout that entire number was brilliant. The way they were just stomping around like this manic sugar high baby was fantastic. That's such a bizarre thing for me to be saying, but if you see their performance, it will make complete sense. Reminded me of Millie O'Connell in a lot of ways of the manic energy that Millie used to bring to Anne Boleyn and to that number in six. So many great comedy moments. There is not a split second in Don't Lose Your Head that Bailey Carson is not doing something hilarious. Just the way that they deliver, here we go, in each section is funny. The way that they pointed at me specifically, I think, or someone very near me when I believe the line was, we want to get X rated. I think it was that part of the song, but I blacked out out of nervousness and panic because it was happening. So I forget exactly, but that definitely happened. Now, Anne Boleyn in Don't Lose Your Head does not have that many opportunities to really go off vocally and put in exciting moments. There is one little snippet at the end and Bailey Carson options up higher than I've ever heard an Anne Boleyn option up before. So I feel like what's written in the song is, sorry, not sorry about what I said, don't lose your head. And we have now subsequently known 
people to start singing, sorry, not sorry about what I said. Bailey Carson, I cannot recreate it for you exactly because it was under a lot of harmonies and my mind was being blown, but it is higher than what I just sang for you. I think it's something around like, sorry, not sorry about what I said. Somewhere there, it was ridiculous and thrilling and perfect and piercing and I loved it. Obviously no one should be recording the show, but dear God, can someone please go and record just that moment because I need to be able to listen to that back and work out what the hell it was. Now, let's talk about Claudia Karaoke as Jane Seymour. I love Claudia in this role. She's such a fantastic performer. Claudia has already been with the show for a year. She is staying on in the role. I got to see her very first performance as Jane Seymour, and I love how she has grown with this role. I still love the way that she sings this song. There's so many details to enjoy about her performance, and I'm gonna to talk to you about just a few. I think it's really impressive that she's been able to put such a strong stamp on this role, considering how iconic Natalie Paris was with this part, but also particularly singing that song, Heart of Stone. It's so difficult to unhear everything Natalie did with the song. And what I love about what Claudia does is she approaches it from this new perspective because so often when we have an iconic rendition of a song, I don't think people spend enough time really looking at the words and considering the phrasing and those sorts of things. So many parts of Wicked, for example, people still sing a certain way because that's how Adina sang it. The notes that Adina added and the phrasing that she sang certain things with remain in the show to this date. It's things like in The Wizard and I, feeling things I never felt. That's such a specific phrasing that I hear everybody doing now. Or the way that everyone will try and sing Don't Run In My Parade like Leah Michelle sang it in Glee. But when they were singing Heart of Stone tonight, Claudia really threw me because there's a line, and though it isn't fair, but I don't care. That's the Natalie Mae Paris version. That's the recorded version. And I can't remember exactly what Claudia did, but she did not linger on that I. She plowed through to the don't care. And it was such an interesting way of looking at that lyric. Arguably, it made more sense. It was a more powerful actioning of that lyric. I don't care. It was interesting how she drove through to that word. And it, this was really evidence of her looking at this song, looking at these lyrics and thinking about telling that story and articulating it emotionally rather than just recreating a vocal that we've all heard a bunch of times. So I applaud her as an actress for that choice. Some other stuff that Claudia did that I really liked, she gasps emotively between verses and I believe it when she does. She has a real maturity and a richness to her voice, which I enjoy completely. And she did such an interesting riff. Towards the end of the song, she started just riffing all over the place. So what would normally be the, yeah, big long held note became this fascinating riff. And then something towards the end, that was just, right at the very end, one of those like 50,000 note riffs that she did. It was subtle, it was under a bunch of other stuff. It was just lovely and fluid and and I slid slowly off of my chair onto the floor. Brava to Claudia Karaoke, Jane Seymour is in very good hands. Oh, and one more thing I have to tell you that they did, which is not even a vocal moment, it's a comedy moment. This was right towards the end of the show when Catherine Parr points out that it's reductive for them to all compare themselves and that they're all stuck and they all stand there looking like lemmings. Claudia as Jane Seymour has a line, what a waste of time. And the way that they delivered that line and just sort of took a few steps forward. And I would describe the facial expression as in the best and nicest possible way, looking a little bit like, it was kind of like a SpongeBob character when they just look wide-eyed and shook. It was very like cartoon fish. It was hilarious. And just <laughs> the way that she maintained that facial expression after saying, what a waste of time. Aaron and I were biting on our fingers, trying not to laugh at this very quiet moment in the show, but genius comedy, absolutely genius. We move on to Dion Ward Anderson. Now, a year ago, when I reviewed this new cast for the first time, when Dion first started playing Cleves alongside Claudia Karayuki and the then new cast at the Vaudeville, I said Dion was my favorite part of the show. And I've seen her twice since. She is formidable as Cleves. She makes Get Down possibly the standout number of the show. It is so difficult for anyone else to compete with the crowd-pleasing performance that she gives. Dion is fantastic in this role. 
And she's a little bit different every time. The comedy line deliveries that she goes for and the moments, and the little noises and the facial expressions, they seem very much to be on a whim. It doesn't seem completely choreographed and pre-planned how she's going to give you each comedic moment. It's so fresh, it's so in the moment, and it's varied every time I've seen it. It's the same kind of comedy beats and it's the same kind of facial expressions, but she varies how she deploys those. I would describe Dion as a walking meme. That is very much the sense of humor. She's like a vine in a musical. She also had one of my favorite get down moments I have ever seen because so often recently I see them picking on someone in the front row to get up and dance during get down and they're just like, oh, they don't want to do it. And so they have to say the backup line, oh, you can't get up, sounds like my ex-husband whatever, but she picked a girl in the middle of that front row who got up and knew the get down choreography. She lost her mind. So when she goes and sits on the throne at the end of get down, while everyone is applauding, going crazy in the theater, Dion starts shouting out the girl in the front row like, yes, amazing. That was such a joyful moment to watch. And it was lovely to see Dion getting so overwhelmed with that girl knowing the exact choreography. And what an amazing moment for her. Thrilled for that girl. What a day. Another thing I love about Dion is she's doing a rap number in the show, but towards the end of that, she will remind you that she can sing. My God, can she sing from get down you dirty rascal, get down. Better than that, from that point in the song onwards, she sings the whole thing. She comes up with the melodies I didn't even know existed in this song before, but I have never heard this song sung so fiercely and so well. And I need to hear her vocals now on something meatier in musical theater after she is done with this show. Next up, we have Katherine Howard. Now I was just going over this in my head and I think I've seen 10 different performers play the role of Katherine Howard. Probably my favorite queen in six. I just think the material that Kay Howard gets is so, so great. The range in that song, not only in terms of the notes and, and the belting and all of that, but the emotional range and the acting that you get to do. And then she has so many of the best comedy lines throughout the show. Not only the little sarcastic monologue going into uh, all you want to do, which I think is probably one of my favorite parts of the show. But also I feel like she gets all of the best sarcastic punchlines throughout the show. When she gets to say the Thomas Cromwell amongst the royal ministers between 1538 and 164, those aren't the, those aren't the years, but you get the idea. Or at the end when she says, Catherine de Valois, I mean, we don't know. And so I think I am very picky when it comes to Catherine Howard's. And I really enjoyed Coco Basigara in this role. She actually sounds very Britney Spears and she has a lot of vocal fry going on. Equally, it's possible she's been doing a lot of shows recently and was maybe a little bit vocally tired, but vocal fry was what it sounded like at this performance, which works. That works for this character and that works for the way that this song has been written because it is an Ariana Grande slash Britney Spears style of a song that has been acknowledged by the writers. I'd say of the six of them at the moment, Coco is the one that feels most like an actual pop star. And it's interesting how they choose to play the trajectory and the journey within the song, All You Wanna Do. If you've only ever listened to this in a cast recording, the live version is considerably more dramatic and emotional. And I've seen a lot of Catherine Howard's play the whole thing a bit knowingly because a lot of her other lines leading up to that point are very like wink to the audience and she gets a lot of double entendre lyrics. And Coco plays it incredibly naively, which I feel like makes it all the more heartbreaking towards the end of that song. She went for a long pause before the last time that she said the word connection and that broke me. That was an incredibly tender and wonderful acting moment. She took exactly as long as she ought to have done. I hope she's brave enough to keep that in and doesn't try and bring it in any sooner. She made us wait for exactly as long as we needed to. The audience collectively held their breath while they realized what was happening and what was being portrayed in this song. I do also enjoy her deadpan comedic delivery. I feel like on occasion, she just hits the wrong word in a joke for it to land the punchline in the way that it is written to. For example, after the whole song, the joke is that she says, and then I was beheaded, because we already know she's already introduced herself as beheaded a bunch of times, and she's made a comment about it with Anne Boleyn previously. We know that she gets her head chopped off, so the line is not, and then I was beheaded, like that happened. The line is to indicate she's just sang this six minute long song, and then I was beheaded, and she hits the beheaded rather than hitting the then. I just feel like occasionally, 
it's the wrong word in the sentence for the joke to land. But again, Coco is one of the new cast members in the show. She has a year to practice this and try out different interpretations of these lines and of this song. And I'm very excited to see her performance grow and change over time because that's what happens. Update. I have just found out that Coco was performing with laryngitis tonight. So the vocal fry Britney Spears style that I was commenting on is an indication that is not actually her normal singing voice. I am incredibly impressed because I only had an inkling that maybe she was a little bit vocally tired or fatigued. I had no idea that she was performing through laryngitis. So kudos to her for getting through what I'm sure was a very challenging show. I would love to go back and hear her when she is more well. Last up, we have Roxanne Couch. Now, Roxanne joined the show last year, but as one of the alternates. And she was mainly playing Catherine Parr and Jane Seymour. And a few weeks ago, I got to see her play Jane Seymour. She gave a great performance in both roles. She just has this light and this warmth and this charm that radiates from her. She has a beautiful smile. She has very engaging eyes. I think she's just an incredibly dynamic performer. And I was wondering how her par would compare with her Seymour. And I get now why she has taken over par full time, because as much as I loved her Seymour, she really is a fantastic par. On a very superficial level, I love the way she has styled her hair with par. It's a hairstyle that we haven't seen very often, and I enjoy it very much. She has an incredibly vibrant voice, very strong vocal, crazy high belt. I like the fact that having been Jane Seymour before, as well as Pa, she's bringing a little bit of Jane Seymour into Pa because she is putting whistle tone in her I don't need your love reprise. I don't know if that's a deliberate nod to Jane Seymour, but that is what I am taking it as because Natalie Paris always used to do the whistle tone in the big, yeah, I am unbreakable. Ooh, that bit. I cannot do whistle tone. I'm not about to do it here in my flat. Also, for the record, it is half midnight, so it would be irresponsible of me to actually attempt whistle tone in my flat at half midnight. Can you imagine? That would be the gayest thing I've ever done, and that's saying something. But I really enjoyed Roxanne as Pa, vocally astonishing, and it did really make me think. Pa is one of the characters who, since the earliest versions of the show that I have seen, it hasn't changed all that much, but Pa has shifted a little bit because I feel like she used to be a little colder and a little sassier, and she's now a lot warmer towards the other queens. And on a scale of sassy to warm, I think Roxanne is definitely the warmest and the kindest and the gentlest of all of the past that I've seen, while still getting her point across with her big feminist moment. She is someone who I think could actually wait a little bit longer in between some of her lines. Just one that stood out to me, the winning contestant is the most protestant. I feel like she then corrected to protestant very quickly. There's the occasional moment throughout the show where I think she could just let it breathe a little bit more. But again, that will come with time. Previously, she was an alternate, only going on occasionally in this role, and now she's getting to play the role full time. So she'll have more opportunities to play with it and try different things. But those are my thoughts on the new cast members of Six. It was another really exciting show. I got great tickets via the Today Takes Rush, can recommend. And I just think this show is still in such an exciting place. It was great to hear so many people in the theater loving it, not knowing the show, not knowing the songs, hearing them for the first time and just going based on word of mouth recommendation. I love that Six has become popular enough that non-theater people are hearing that it is great and going to see it for that reason. I wish every success for this musical. I think it's just fantastic. If you're someone who has not been to see Six for a while, but is a fan of the show, absolutely go and see this new cast. There are so many fantastic performers that you need to discover and become obsessed with because they deserve to be hyped up just as much as the original cast of Six were when they first opened in the show. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my stage or YouTube channel for plenty more theatrical content coming very soon. If you have seen the new cast of Six already, let us know in the comments section what you thought. Have you seen any of the new alternates and swings that I haven't had a chance to see yet? Let us know all of the exciting little details. If you really enjoyed today's video, you can use the super thanks button down below to give me a tip that very much helps me to make these videos on a regular basis. Also, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Mickey Joe Theatre, where you can gain access to some exclusive photo and video content. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe!